This presentation contains a lot of detailed information. Feel free to pause the lecture if you need more time to see the details. Atheism and Islam An atheist is a person who does not believe in God, while an agnostic is unsure if there is a God. First, let's discuss mathematical probability. As you continue to flip a coin or roll a die, the odds that you will be correct in your guesses goes down significantly. Applying this to the Quran, you can see that it contains many accurate scientific descriptions that could not be the result of pure chance. For example, the Quran mentioned that the earth was spherical and that moonlight was reflected, not its own source. The Quran also mentions that every living thing is primarily made up of water. Again, the odds that a few different things, not commonly known at the time and place, were accurate and defy mathematical odds. There are many more examples beyond these three to show this was a book from the Creator. The Quran is a book of signs, which is the, the meaning of the term for verse, and roughly 1,000 out of 6,000 of the verses are scientific in nature. It would be easy to be an atheist if you had only a little knowledge of science or what the Quran says. Note that the Quran does not contain any errors. Here are some common areas of disagreement or confusion related to science and the Islamic position on them. First of all, creation versus evolution. Darwin published The Origin of Species, showing how living things adapted over time. Yet many religious people, including Christians, reject the theory of evolution. In fact, some groups do not believe in the existence of dinosaurs and think the Earth was only around for thousands of years. The Church was known to suppress even reading the Bible and scientific advancement, as in the case of Galileo. As for Muslims, there is no conflict between science and religion. We do not find evidence of the missing link between apes and humans. Although we believe in evolution generally, human beings were independently created. During the Western Dark Ages, the Muslim community was highly developed and made many advances in the sciences. Muslims should not take the example of Christians and reject evolution. It is a scientific fact through methods such as carbon dating. Muslims acknowledge the change of species over time, microevolution, and even macroevolution in most cases. However, the creation of man was an exception. Note that the Quran is not simply a book of science, and we do not acknowledge. Note that the Quran is not simply a book of science, and we do acknowledge the possibility of unscientific miracles as well. Another question is how long humans have been on Earth. Man is the last creation of God and his exact time of creation has not been specified. Next, a law in the universe. In the Quran it asks, Do we not study the heavens and the earth? According to scientists, all originated from an initial Big Bang. The Quran also mentions the spherical nature of the earth with the night and day merging into one another. The words chosen also connote spreading so that the spread of the earth was spherical. Another important point is that the moon does not generate its own light but merely reflects the sun's rays.
In the time of the prophet, the moon was split. We can find evidence of it on the moon's surface. This is the Quranic verse where it was mentioned. The two halves were over these mountains for a time. There are also defined orbits mentioned in the Quran. You can see the orbits here. Now, let's look at light and how far it can travel in space-time. Notice the relation between the Earth's rotation on its axis and its orbit around the Sun. Recently, a black hole was photographed for the first time. Edwin Hubble showed that the universe was expanding. What is amazing is that the Quran alludes to this fact even before the first telescope was invented. In fact, the Quran mentions seven heavens. Here is a diagram. What about UFOs and extraterrestrials? The number of God's creations is vast, so there is no conflict in discovering alien life forms. Modern Science versus the Quran Some scientists were amazed to find detailed and accurate information in the Quran, such as about the human body, embryology, and dermatology. Some even became Muslims. Next, we turn to physics. Democritus proposed the idea of the atom in ancient times, and the Quran confirms the use of the atom, even referring to the modern idea of subatomic particles. Next, geography. The water cycle is described in 1580, but the Quran already had descriptions of it. Water is heavily emphasized as a big blessing in the Quran. Geology Only in recent times did we learn that mountains are actually rooted deep underground, yet the Quran mentioned this fact thousands of years ago. Oceanography The Quran actually explains how there is a barrier between sweet and salty water. Here is an example. Another example. The Quran also mentions the layers of darkness related to the ocean. We now know at some depths of the ocean, fish can't even see themselves. In terms of biology, The Quran mentions the biological fact of water-based life. Even man and every other living thing is based on water. Botany 
God talks about the pairs of things, both animal and plant. The Quran has a lot to say about zoology. Specifically, it addresses the fact that animals live in communities. It goes into detail about the bees, even going so far as to address them as females. We actually know now that the majority of worker bees are female. It also knew of the healing properties of the nectar taken from their bellies. The Quran also talks of the ants, giving them special attention, as in the story of Solomon. We learn through modern science that ant society greatly resembles human society. Embryology is another subject specified in the Quran. The Quran mentions how we are fashioned in the womb. We know that everything about us is programmed in our DNA. The Quran mentions that only part of the liquid results in fertilization. God also talks about the specific stages of embryonic development. It is amazing that each kind of cell results in a different kind of development. Here are examples of human development. See how both parents contribute to the baby's development. Dr. Keith Moore, who studied embryology, mentioned that he relied on the Quran to understand many things in his field. Notice how detailed the verses addressing fetal development are. Another scientist concurred, saying such detailed information shows a text derived by God. As science progresses, we do not expect any conflict between it and religion, as Quran is considered the final revelation from God. Finally, what about other religions when compared with Islam? Who is God? This is the central question for seekers of truth. Here are the six biggest religions. Here are their timelines. Their population and growth rates. Here are the Abrahamic faiths. Beginning with Buddhism, you can see it was based on the teachings of a man and is more focused on enlightenment. In fact, there is not even a god. On the other hand, Hinduism is not a focused religion, but accumulated thousands of specific tribal teachings over time. There are many different practices and many texts.
So the result is polytheism, or many gods. There is also a belief in the cycles of life, death, and rebirth, which result in karma and reincarnation. Sikhism is a combination of Hindu and Islam. Here are some of its symbols. and some of the practices. Here are more practices that people associate with Sikhism. Jesus was born long ago, and much of what we know of him was written decades after his death. Here are some Christian symbols. There are many varieties and sects of Christianity, the idea of a trinity, as well as some questions recently regarding celibacy, women's issues, etc. Here is some of the background on Judaism. Some of its symbols Note that belief in one God is central. Islam is a final, universal religion for all mankind, not specific sects or groups. Here are the five pillars. some symbols, and holy places. Here are some things you might not know or hear about Islam. One thing you will notice when comparing religions is that all holy texts have changed or evolved over time, except the Quran. What do we mean by changed? Here is the criteria by which we judge an authentic revelation. Continued. If we use these standards to judge, the Bible cannot be in its original form. Here is an example of a Christ-like figure that many Christians may not know about. This chart is a pros and cons list to compare what a true religion will look like. If you already believe that there is only one God and that Muhammad received revelation in the Quran, you are basically a Muslim.
In conclusion, the only unaltered final revealed holy book is the Quran. Muhammad was a messenger of God from the line of Abraham. And the only one worthy of worship is Allah or God the Creator. You can continue to question and learn more at this website.